but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. In my dream, I was represented as being on something like a hill in a great old city. Before my eyes revealed the panoramic view of the city with its high towers, fortified walls, beautiful buildings. But while I was looking at all this, I suddenly shuddered as I now noticed that just to my side stands a man who also looks at the majestic city. We'll call him the man from the dream, though as you will see it turned out that this was no ordinary person. Looking at the stranger to me, I immediately asked him, excuse me, but where are we and where from is this city so familiar to me? He turned to me and answered, this is the old city of Jerusalem and the time is year 70 after Christ. 70 after Christ? But I know from the history that it was the year of the last siege of Jerusalem by the Roman armies. The man he looked at me and said, yes, that's right. This is the time of the final siege of Jerusalem and thou shalt to present to God's people a message of warning and preparation. Echo, wake up! We missed the introduction! My name is Emil and I have the pleasure to present to you an interesting dream I had recently. I'm 39 years old and I'm generally from the average class of society but what is more distinctive for me is that I come from a Christian family and even from birth I was brought up to place virtues and faith in God as the main priorities in my life. But also something more, my family is a fourth, fifth generation back in time who keep the Ten Commandments of God in their original form, just as they are recorded in the Bible. And since we are going to talk about a dream, I should point out that in general I am not one of those dream people types who dream a lot. I very rarely have any dream, even of the so-called natural dreams. And if you ask me, what are the things that convinced me that this dream is not accidental and that it's good to share it with other people? On the one hand, I have to say, since early childhood I have experience in the study of the biblical scriptures, I must mention the prophecy in the book of Joel, where it is said that in the last times God will use prophetic dreams to give different messages to his people. But also the dream is connected with one historic event. The siege of Jerusalem in year 70 after Christ. And the story of this siege occupies a special place in the Bible prophecies of the end times. 
these prophecies state that at the end of the time, just before the coming of the kingdom of God, there will be a difficult period and the characteristic of this period will be very similar to the historic siege of Jerusalem became in the 70 AD. I would also like to draw attention to the words with which is presented this prophecy of the siege. When he shall see the abomination of desolation and to stand in the holy place. Let us remember these words as we shall need them a little later in the story of the dream. Moreover, after the dream was given, I received already in real life three clear proofs that this is not an accident. And after hearing first the story of the dream itself, I will present to you these signs. They are also quite interesting because it's very rare for a person to dream a particular dream and after that the dream to appear in the real life. So fasten your seatbelts because we're coming back in the story of the dream. Jerusalem, 70 AD, I replied surprised and continued, but I know from history that this is the year of the last siege of the city by the Roman army. Yes, exactly this is the time of the final siege of Jerusalem and thou shalt present to the people of God a message of warning and preparation. Wait a minute, surely you have some mistake, as I am not a military general and I am not a man with a military profession to organize and lead the fights. I don't even have experience in this field. It doesn't matter that you are not a military profession. Not by might, but by wisdom the salvation will come. You have certainly got the wrong man, because I don't live in that time of the history. I live almost 2000 years after 70 AD. Then he added solemnly. Be sure, you live in this very time of the history and do you think God can allow such a mistake as to confuse the man? Well, well. I said at the end, eventually, if there is no mistake, I will try to come up with something. But from where to start? Like if I knew what forces the enemy has, I would then know and better how to prepare. Can you somehow show me the enemy's forces? The man from the dream again turned to me and said, Yes, I can. Come with me and I will show you all the powers of the enemy. Then suddenly the landscape of the ancient city of Jerusalem began to it fades from our sight until it finally fades away completely. Before us a great plain was discovered. Now I understood that this man whoever I'm talking to is no ordinary person. This whole plain it was full of troops, marching soldiers, armies, terrifying weapons and the number of them I could not enumerate, for their hand was not in sight. Oh, but it's very big and a strong army, I exclaimed. I was such an army in Jerusalem that can it resist? He answered me again, not by might, but by wisdom. Now is the time when power is given to the beast and to its army and through force it is not possible to overcome. And as for the people of God in Jerusalem, it is divided into two main groups. Come with me again and I will show them to you. 
Suddenly, the clamor of the numerous troops died down, the landscape changed, and we found ourselves again in the old city of Jerusalem. Then the man of the dream cried out in a loud voice and issued something like an order. Open the gates and let the first group out! Two great gates opened and out of them came multiple people lined up. They marched in ranks. At first I thought it was some kind of special forces for a quick response, but it turned out to be a different reality when the first ranks began to pass close by us. This was completely normal people. Everyone had a Bible in their hands and as they moved they were looking up at the sky and saying something like O oh Lord, who art in heaven? We see the end times coming and we perish. Have mercy on your people, for only on your mercy we hope. As I watched them, the man from the dream standing next to me said, The first group, these are the people of prayer from God's people. They are the smaller group, but these are people who more often take the time to research the scriptures and to pray. And these people understand the times in which they live, but they say to themselves, we cannot do nothing to change the world events, the only thing we can do is to pray. And that is what they do. But isn't prayer something particularly important at a time like this? I added. Yes, prayer is important, but it's not enough. Each one needs to prepare practically, and if he does not, he too will fall victim to the siege. Okay, I replied. Can you show me now the second group that is based in Jerusalem? The second group is larger and all of it are gathered in the central square in Jerusalem. Come with me and you'll see them. Then suddenly we found ourselves in a large square in the center of the city where there was a very great multitude of people assembled. What impressed me was that in the square were placed a multitude of tables around which the people had grouped themselves. All the people around these tables, they were discussing some things, but they seemed cheerful and smiling and happy, quite a different setting from the first group, which we had just seen the praying people. Then. I turned to the man who was beside me from the dream and I asked him It seems to me that everyone has gathered here to discuss the coming siege of Jerusalem but I cannot understand why does everyone look so joyful and happy and smiling as if they are at some party or celebration. Unfortunately, these people don't even realize that the final siege is approaching and that will happen in their time. Come with me now and let's take a walk and go between the tables and you will find out what everyone is doing here. And so we started walking in between the tables, looking around and listening closely what people are discussing. On one table there were some architectural drawings and people there were talking about upcoming construction projects. On another many young people discussed what education to complete and which university is best. At the third table a boy was giving a flower to a young girl and they discussed their wedding date. On another table there were some computers with charts and people were watching some exchange currencies. Others talked about what car to buy and what house to build themselves. Then I suddenly stopped and asked the man from the dream standing next to me. 
What's going on here? All the people they talk about all sorts of things and everyone makes all sorts of plans for the future, but I don't see on any table discussing the approaching siege of Jerusalem. Yes, you notice correctly, he answered me. These are the people of the second group among God's people. They are the more numerous group. They also prepare their characters for the kingdom of God, but spend less time on study the scriptures and for prayer, unlike the first group you saw a moment ago. And thus, they cannot recognize the dangers of the times in which they live. They say to themselves, Crises have always come and gone, but we are expected to do the best we can. Life goes on and we will plan and we will develop until the very end. And when the last times comes, God cares how to get us through them. For a moment, I interrupted him and added, But we saw the approaching armies messing and preparing. It is not possible for anyone in this city to be unaware of the approaching siege. Where are the leaders and the rulers of these people? Surely they will know for the coming siege. Then the man from the dream replied, Yes, there are many rulers with different positions and responsibilities and they are all gathered on the big stage in the middle of the square. There they play a variety of musical instruments, so all people at the tables feel comfortable having the background of pleasant music. Do they play musical instruments? I exclaimed in amazement. Not possible at a time like this. Take me to them to talk. Then we kept walking forward among the tables until indeed suddenly before us was revealed one large stage which also had a multitude of people and they really did play musical instruments. The air was filled with a nice and gentle music. Then I approached one of the leaders and I spoke to him saying How can you playing musical instruments at a time like this when the final siege of Jerusalem is coming? The man from the stage looked at me, he smiled and then looked away again and continued playing. At this uncomfortable moment, another man from the stage approached me and said commandingly, don't worry, people at the tables. God is at the helm of the history and watch over his people. And if any trouble is coming, we the leaders are the first on which it will be discovered. Then I turned to the man from the dream that stood beside me and listened silently to my conversations with the leaders. I asked him, what will happen to the plans and dreams of all those people when the final siege comes? Everything will be vanity and evaporate into one blink. When the siege comes, then everyone will think just about how to save his life. But it will be too late. Only those who have prepared in advance for the siege only they will be able to escape the enemy destructive force. I asked him again, but a moment ago you mentioned that a message of warning and preparation must be given to God's people. What can I do then when I don't even see one to prepare for the coming siege? The man from the dream looked at me, smiled and said his last words in the story of the dream. You know what to do. You know. Then I got on the big stage 
The music from one stopped. People at the tables also stopped talking and turned their eyes to the stage. Then I started to shout in a loud voice. There is not one prepared. There is not one prepared. And as it often happens in adventure stories, that they end at the most interesting. And so here the dream ended. And so this was the dream story of the final siege of Jerusalem. It would be nice if there was a little more continuation to see how this story would unfold. But thankfully there is a continuation and it is even more interesting because it happened in the real life. The dream of the final siege of Jerusalem appeared on October 8, 2021. The day was Friday night, this is Saturday, Sabbath. And the very morning, this it was already Sabbath morning, October 9, while I was still lying even in bed and I was at a loss as to what this story and this dream was, suddenly my phone rings and I pick up and say, hello, good morning. On the other side, a man replied, Good morning, Emil. Sorry to wake you up so early, but it just so happened the circumstances that we had to do a Bible presentation today, but we won't be able to present it. And so we turn to you if you can present something as there will be a meeting. But why are you telling me so late? At the last moment, I'm not prepared. They told me, Sorry, but we are sure you will come with something and you will cope with the task. And I said, OK, OK, I will try to think of something. After we finished the conversation on the phone, I immediately thought about the words. You should give a presentation. OK, I will think of something. It seems very similar to my conversation with the man from the dream, because he also said that I had to present a message and I said, OK, I will think of something. Does God want to represent the story of the dream on this presentation? But I said to myself, about this dream, I will think about it later. What to think of now for this presentation? In the end, I decided that I will choose and present for viewing a video presentation from the internet, from YouTube, since there everything is already already done. I immediately opened my computer YouTube browser and there were many video presentations lined up one under the other, but the first one of these, the latest presentation that was published, immediately attracted my attention. I immediately pointed the pointer, the index, to open this video presentation and suddenly a picture appeared on the screen which shocked me. When I looked at it, I was really quite surprised. It is actually one of the most common paintings related to the historic siege of Jerusalem. And as you can see, even the author of this presentation in the upper corner has put in large numbers the year when this siege has taken place, the 70th year AD, the siege of Jerusalem. So I stood and watched the picture and I thought, am I still dreaming? Seventy year? The siege of Jerusalem? And even something more, this video was headed with the words when the abomination standing in the holy place. But aren't those exactly the words from the Bible 
about the prophecy of the siege of Jerusalem? Very interesting, that night I had a dream that said that I am in the ancient city of Jerusalem and the year is 70 AD and immediately after I wake up, open my computer and the first thing which appears, the latest post-it presents this same siege. I stood and watched this picture and I said to myself, there is something going on here and I think I know who is involved in this job. There is no way this could just happen by accident. That was the first sign that reinforced in me the conviction that this dream was not accidental and that God wants to present it to other people as well. And so the days began to pass, I kept thinking about that dream and what had happened that Sabbath, October 9, 2021. The new year 2022 has come, the month of January. Around the world, interestingly, countries have begun to loosen so-called restrictive measures. There was no more need for green certificates, no more travel tests. As if in front of everyone it was shaping up to be a happy, peaceful and a year filled with many tourist trips. And with that in mind, I thought about the dream story which I had and I was saying to myself, it seems to me that the dream story about concerning siege, troops, military operations does not fit very well with the pleasantly shaping new year that awaits us. The days kept going by and I kept saying to myself, if could God have given me some more sign for this dream because I cannot deny it, something unique happened. The dream appeared in real life that very morning, but time was passing until the calendar stops at the date of February 24, 2022, when I heard on the news that between Russia and Ukraine has declared a military operation, on the one hand I was shocked, but on the other hand I began to understand that the world events are moving towards a familiar scenario for me. The scenario from the story of the dream of the final siege I had recently. I thought to myself, isn't this the right time to share this dream? And on the same day, in the afternoon of February 24, it happened that I met briefly with a friend, we talked about what was going on on the news. Did you hear about the war? Yes, yes, I heard, replied he, and then I say to him, isn't this some kind of relation to Bible prophecies about the end times? He turned to me, looked at me and said, you know, I think like there aren't many people who talk more specifically about the practical preparation that is good to do for these end times in which we live. And then he stopped for a moment, looked at me and addressed me with an appeal which in such a kind I had not gotten before in my whole life. He looked at me and said the following, Emil, you know I think now the time has come when exactly you should come out and talk about these things. I was left a little thoughtful but right in this moment another man came and interrupted us and they both left somewhere. But I stayed like that 
and thought over the words that this friend pronounced. Now is the time when exactly you must come out and talk about these things. Now, on February 24. What things? Of course, this guy knew nothing about the dream that I had, but in the words spoken, now is the time when you need to come out and talk, I recognized another sign that God wants this dream to be heard. And so, right on February 24, 2022, the day that a new war page of world history was opened, it was given to me another confirmation that now is the time to present the story of this dream. And maybe the story of this dream has and some connection to that date. But also very soon after that came another sign, a third, that in the history of the dream has some divine involvement and that is not accidental. It happened on a Sunday morning, very early, outside still it was dark and I woke up and I couldn't sleep anymore either. And while I was thinking what to do and how to use the time, I thought this was the right time to sketch the highlights of the video presentation which I was going to give about the final siege dream. So I got some white copy papers to write on and a pen and I left the room. I shut up quietly the door behind me and sat down on the one couch that was in the hallway. But I immediately remembered that I took a piece of paper and I took a pen too, but I forgot to take any hardback book or notebook, textbook, something to subject those copy sheets. I couldn't write. I needed something to submit and I said to myself, now if I go back to the room, we'll surely wake up others. I was sitting on the couch and I was thinking from where can I get some book for submission. Right at that moment I noticed that next to me on the couch where I was sitting, there was some book. Someone had forgotten a book there. I immediately took it in my hands and I looked at it. It was this book. When I looked, I was again surprised and thoughtful. This was a children's book Bible stories and on the front cover there was a big picture. There was shown the picture from Jacob's dream, who dreams of a ladder with angels descending and ascending it, and God who stands above. Very interesting, I needed a book on which to place the sheets of paper on which I was going to write the dream which I had for the final siege of Jerusalem and someone, and we know who this someone is, had already done that right in the place where I would have sat that morning, a child to forget one of his books. A book with big picture showing also a dream. And not just any dream, but the dream of Jacob from the Bible. Jacob's dream with the ladder, the angels and God who stands above and pronounces the assurance, I am with you, where are you going on this journey? It was this assurance that Jacob needed most at the beginning of his journey. It was this assurance that I needed too on that early morning when I was going to start the journey of the dream of the last siege. And God took care of this assurance that I can get it through this book, 
which a child had forgotten exactly where I was going to sit. Looking at this picture at that moment, I understood even more clearly that God's presence and blessing is standing in the journey of the dream for the final siege as it stands in Jacob's journey. The journey of Jacob in which he received his new name, Israel, a journey in which the twelve tribes of Israel have appeared and a new nation appeared on the world stage. A nation that in all future centuries would be the bearer of God's covenant and law. A nation in which the Messiah was also to appear, who was to bring blessing to all the nations of the earth. Jacob's dream actually represents the divine beginning of the journey of the people of God. And so I took this book with the dream of Jacob, I put my sheets on top and started writing the dream that I had about the final siege of Jerusalem. The dream that actually speaks for the last journey of the people of God. And so those were the three key moments, signs, evidence that helped me and convinced me that the dream of the final siege of Jerusalem is not accidental and that God is behind this dream journey. So that was the story of the dream of the final siege of Jerusalem. And one of the central messages of the story is that the final siege in the prophecies of the Bible is triggered and put into action, and that the time of its beginning had come. And I think it is not difficult to guess what is the day and what is the event of this beginning. Therefore, we need to understand better in more details what are the main prophetic characteristics of this last siege, and therefore what practical preparation would be appropriate to do. Maybe you know some of the basic aspects of this preparation, the important question remains whether you will decide to put it into practice. And remember that the man from the dream said that now is the time, the right time, to make this preparation and that if we miss this opportune time, then it will be too late. Maybe you recognized yourself in one of the groups that were represented in the dream. Maybe you saw yourself marching into the first group of researchers of the scriptures and the people of prayer. Or you were sitting there in the central square and planned your dream future. Or maybe you were on the elevated stage and carry some leadership responsibility on your shoulders. In the end, it doesn't matter which of the groups you recognize yourself in, as the faithful question remains, what shall we do with the most important message that the dream of the final siege of Jerusalem brings? And it is, there is not one prepared. There is not one prepared.